Welcome to video 51 in series 3 and in this video I'm going to implement the script that allows the player to detect items. Okay, so in the next chapter once we've implemented the item system then we'll actually be able to pick up items because of this script. I'll write it for right now. It won't be 100% complete. Uh, it'll be waiting for us to do the next chapter. And I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time around. Instead of typing out the whole script, I'm going to just paste it in and explain how it works. I'll let you type it out. And then I'll explain how it all actually works, how the script works. It'll save a bit of time and allow me to spend a bit more time explaining what is it that I'm actually doing. So pretty much all I'm doing is firing a sphere cast from the player's camera forwards uh, in the hope of detecting anything that is in the layer item. So I'm going to make a layer called item. And if something is detected, then I will store a reference to it in this variable here, item available for pickup. And if it's within the range because of the sphere cast touching it, and uh, I guess the player being close enough, so yes, the sphere cast touching it, then this boolean is going to be true as well. So if the player was to then press their E key, which is going to be the pickup button pickup, uh, if they were to then press their E key, while those conditions are satisfied, this is not null, this, this reference, and it's in range, then the item will be picked up and placed underneath the player's first person character. So it could be a weapon, it could be a block, it could be anything. Uh, so if it's just put as item. Alright, so that is that is pretty much it. It's really simple when you think about that. Now let me go through what is going on with this code. First of all, I have this public layer mask, layer to detect. I want to be able to set that in the inspector. Uh, so let me just check. Yes, I saved that so I can attach it to the player. It'll make immediate sense when I attach it. You can see there, layer to detect. And I actually already have an item layer, so I'll set it right now. Uh, and then the ray transform pivot. Uh, so what transform will the ray be fired from? So I wanted to fire from the player's camera, which is a logical place to fire from because that's exactly where the player is looking from. Uh, then I will type the name of the button inside of the editor rather than defining it here. And uh, then just put that in the input manager. Oh, why don't I just do that right now? So I'll define that uh, first person character as the ray transform pivot. And I'm going to just type in here the name. Pick up item. That's it. And I'll just copy that. And that's it. Then go to edit, project settings, input. And just add in another item here, another row, 20. And this one is going to be called that. Just paste it in, pick up item, positive button E. OK. So that's it. So I've got that much done. All right, so let me go back and start continuing to explain. So as I'm explaining, you can, I guess, pretty much type it out. Uh, so I'm just, I have it up here. All right, so continuing on. Then private transform item available for pickup. So when the sphere cast touches something that is in the item layer, it's going to be a place, a reference is going to be kept to it here so that it can actually be manipulated uh, by the item system to place it underneath the player. Uh, then private ray cast hit, well that's just to get information of what the sphere cast actually hits, the detect range, so how far far will the sphere cast uh, go out, uh, the detect radius, it's a sphere cast, so I don't want to use a ray cast, I want to use a sphere cast because then you know it gives a bit more you know, wider coverage. The player doesn't have to be pinpoint looking at something to pick it up, which can be frustrating. So they might be in a panic situation. There's a some item they need or a weapon not too far from where they're looking at. So you want to use a sphere cast there. You want to let the player be able to pick something up that's near their view, near their uh, vision point, but just a bit off, uh, just so that they don't have to try and pinpoint it to try and pick it up, which is frustrating. Uh, okay, and then uh, just a boolean item in range, so if, yep, it's in range, then it can be picked up, otherwise it can't be, even if we have a reference to it. And then some label width, label height, because I use void on GUI, just to show on the screen that there is an item available to, for pickup, and the player can press E to do that. 
OK. Uh, and then I just use here the methods that I have. Update, cast ray for detecting items, check for item pickup attempt, and void on GUI. So let's go through them. Uh, void on GUI is super simple. Uh, if an item is in range and the item available for pickup transform is not equal to null, then I simply do GUI.label, and this is the GUI code. This is the old GUI system, but it, still, it works perfectly for something like this. All, all I then say is a new rect, and I say screen.width. I'm centering it. That's why I'm saying screen.width divided by 2 minus the width of the label, which is displaying that text, divided by 2, and then the screen.height divided by 2. Uh, and then I, of course, have the label width, label height. I could have done screen dot height minus label height divided by two, but I didn't really need to because it's so small. Uh, that much offset doesn't really matter. Player doesn't care uh, that much. And actually, no, there is a actually no. I remember now why actually I don't do that because there's a crosshair uh, in the middle of the screen, or will be uh, in a future uh, chapter. You will have a crosshair there, and so you don't want to be putting text exactly in the middle of the screen. So sorry, that was actually why I don't offset that. I mean, why I don't try to place the height uh, exactly in the middle of the screen, the height of the label. And then item available for pickup.name. And this is simply what the label displays. So it just displays the item name. You could do more fancy. You could say uh, plus and then the uh, quotation marks. And you could say um, item available for pickup name, press E. So you could have put it like before, say press E to pick up uh, this pretty much. You could do something like that. But I'm not doing that. I'm just taking the simple way. And that's it. So that's void on GUI. So you've written that. Good. And void on GUI runs, it's a unity method. So yeah, sorry, I didn't mention that. You need to write it exactly like this, how you see it. Don't deviate. This is an inbuilt unity method that runs at its own pace to draw the uh, GUI, the older style unity GUI. OK, going back to update. So write in both of these uh, two methods here, the cast ray for detecting items. Have them both run in update. Uh, so let's have a look at cast ray for detecting items. It's a very simple uh, method here. All I'm doing is saying if the sphere cast hits something, uh, then, and it's the, the important thing is I fire it from the camera, the first person character. I, you already know what the detect radius. I fire it in the forwards direction, of course, because I want it to come exactly straight out of the player's camera. And then I want to get information of what was hit if something is hit. And then finally, of course, well, not finally, the detect range, how far it can go out, and then the layer to detect. So I know that it's only touching things in the item layer and not unnecessarily trying to touch all sorts of other stuff and causes problems and not being able to pick up what we need to pick up. Okay, so then when that happens, when that's satisfied, then it means I've got something available for pickup. I store a reference to the transform, and I set the Boolean item and range to true, which I can use when I'm going to check for item pickup attempt. If this uh, sphere cast doesn't touch anything, which is, in fact, most of the time it won't, uh, then item and range is simply set to false. It means there are no items in range, unless, of course, your game is just full of items to pick up. Uh, then go ahead. So that's the first method. Now, the second method is check for item pickup attempt. Uh, so for that one, um, you can see I've got a bit of code commented out. Anyway, all that is, it, it's, it's pretty simple. I check that, uh, first of all, is get button down, uh, the button pickup, which I define in the inspector. You already saw that. And the game is not paused, so you shouldn't be able to pick up stuff when the game is paused. So the time to time scale should be greater than zero. And yes, the item is in range. And I just do this uh, funny sort of check here. I'm saying that the item available dot root dot tag is not equal to game manager references dot player tag. What I'm saying here is that if the item is already you know, on the player, the player is already carrying this item, and the sphere cast is for some reason hitting an item that the player is already carrying, then don't try to pick it up because it's already on the player. That's just unnecessary action happening there. Uh, in fact, it, it'll probably make the item disappear and reappear 
in in front of the player if they're holding it and that would look really odd so that's all i'm doing there i'm just saying that if it's already on the player so root means so if i say item if you have any game object uh, so let me go down if you are saying the root of say canvas health the root is player so it goes right back to the very root uh, of this uh, tree of game objects of transforms so root is player okay so going back to the script and uh, that's it so if those conditions are satisfied uh, then i would actually uh, on the item i would access the item master script and call this event for picking up that item and that you will see in the next chapter and then we'll actually be able to pick up items but for now uh, I'm just going to have this debug log uh, statement here, pick up attempted. Uh, that is at least enough to just check that this script is actually doing something. Uh, so how about I go and test that? So I hope you've copied that all down. You've written it all down. Uh, so I'll just scroll through it again so you can see each part of it. Make sure that you haven't missed anything. Okay, so it was pretty simple. Okay, let's jump back to Unity. And how can I do this? How about I make a uh, game object, a cube, again, place it in front of the player. I will set it to the item layer. Oh, whoops, I keep creating stuff inside of the player because I have it selected. And uh, then that's good enough. And uh, just check that everything is set up here. Good. So I'll hit play, jump in get close there you go you can see it on the screen can you see that cube there's an item available for pickup let's press e pickup attempted perfect easy if i move away and if i press e now nothing happens i can't pick it up it, the reference is still stored to it but i can't pick it up because i'm not in range and i'm not looking at it so there you go so this is also what I meant by you don't need it exactly in the center. It's far less frustrating for gameplay. Far more, it's far better for the player if you use a sphere cast for this sort of a thing. Okay, if I press E, I pick up attempted. All right, so that's it. It's working nicely. And uh, pretty much uh, that's it for player detect item. In the next chapter, you'll see uh, the item system, but we're not finished with this chapter. There's more stuff that needs to be done for the player. All right, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video.